वेलकम टू ऑल माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर देशमुख एम एस प्रेजेंटिंग द थेरी लेक्चर्स बेस्ड ऑन क्रिटिकल स्पीड सो बिफोर द स्टार्टिंग एनी पर्टिकुलर थिंग्स वॉट इज क्रिटिकल स्पीड क्रिटिकल स्पीड इज नथिंग बट दॉट द स्पीड एट विच बॉडी गेट्स वाइब्रेट्स इन ट्रांसफर डायरेक्शन इज फॉर द critical speed why it is here in general case body vibrates with the lumps and vibration but where whether it is shaft under that conditions it will be vibrate in a transverse directions transverse directions quite simple the direction which is perpendicular to the motion of the body or you can say axis of body that is called as what transverse vibration transverse direction now the figure shows that the critical or the whirling speed of the shaft look at this these are the two bearings bearing contain the shaft which are fitted okay at the middle of this we are fitting the one of the rotor or the disc okay now look at this e is the eccentricity we are provided with some distance o e and we got the o points axis or rotations which is shown with the center line now the two conditions that is in first condition that is the when shaft is stationary conditions okay there is only existing of the eccentricity okay but when we are shaft is rotating under that conditions we got that two deflection that is y and e e is already exist y is a is a deflection at the respective points we got the rotor at the rotor we are having the maximum deflection fc when the shaft is rotating fc is the centripetal force which is acting on the body now these are the particular formulations the circular frequency omega n is equal to 100 s upon n omega n that is circular frequency s is the stiffness of the shaft m is equal to what the mass of rotor system so y is equal to omega square into e upon omega n square minus omega omega n is the natural frequency omega is equal to frequency of shaft so by simplification omega is equal to plus minus omega e square into e divided by omega n square minus omega n square just rearranging it we got the plus minus e upon omega n or c upon omega whole bracket square minus 1 putting as a omega n is equal to omega c now therefore this is omega c is what critical speed now come to the our Uh, very important formula that is critical or whirling speed omega c is equal to omega n that is equal to s upon m under root of g by delta hertz so delta is equal to m into g upon s so if nc is critical speed or the whirling speed in rpms then 2 pi nc under root of g upon delta or nc is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root of g upon delta so 0.4985 this is particular under root of g divided by delta square root of delta that is rps so delta is equal to what static deflection of the shaft in a meters now there is a problem based on the whirling speed see the statement the calculate the whirling speed of the shaft of 20 mm diameter and 0.6 meter long 
carrying a mass of 1 kg and its midpoint the density of the shaft is 40 mg upon m square m cube and young's modulus is 200 giga newton upon m square assume that the shaft is freely supported so what is given in the mass that is a the length is given 20 meter diameter is 0.6 meter mass is 1 kg at its mid point density of shaft is given material that is equal to 40 mg upon m cube and young's modulus 2000 that is 200 giga newton per meter square and they are the given this the one assumption that is the, the shaft is freely supported now draw the diagram which have the 0.6 meter length 1 kg load which is acting at the center 12.6 this is the particular weight which is the uniformly distributed kg per meter 5.60 volt into d raised to 4 putting in the value of d is equal to 0.02 we got 7.855 in raised to minus 9 this is the inertia m raised to 4 ms is equal to area into length into density so pi by 4 diameter 0.02 square into 1 into 40 into 10 raised to 3 we got ms is equal to 12.6 kg per meter now uh, putting all this value in delta is equal to omega l cube upon 48 ei that is equal to 0.28 you can say 28 into 10 to minus 6 meter delta is a static deflection putting the w as 12.6 we got 0.0 0.133 tends to minus 3 meter or you can say 0.003133 So f n is equal to zero point four nine eight five under root of delta plus delta s upon one point twenty eight twenty seven. We got the natural frequency is equal to zero point four nine eight five upon one eleven point fifty two ten to minus three forty three upon forty three point three hertz. S is equal to whirling speed of shaft is equal to we got forty three point three rpms into sixty. That is equal to two five nine eight. So we got this. Answer that is two point five two five nine eight. A problem number second. A shaft one point five meter long supported with a flexible bearing at uh, ends carries two wheels each of fifty kg and mass. A uh, wheel is situated at a center of the shaft and the others at a distance of three seventy five mm from the center towards left. The shaft is hollow of external diameter seventy five mm and the internal diameter forty mm. The density of shaft material is seven seven double zero kg per meter cube, and its modulus of elasticity is two hundred giga newton per meter square. And find the lowest whirling speed of the shaft, taking into the account the mass of shaft. So. Taking down the formulations, we got that I is equal to pi upon sixty four d one raised to four minus d two raised to four one point four ten raised to minus six meter cube meter raised to four. Just before the these are the formulations. Before the starting formulations, we have to draw the diagram A and B. These are the simply supported beam which carries the uniform distributed mass W upon Unit length zero point three seven five at distance A. We got the mass fifty kg into two. That is zero point seventy five mass. That is fifty kg. Total length one point five meter. Now therefore, mass of this shaft per meter M is equal to area into length into length this density. Pi into bracket zero point zero seventy five square minus zero point zero four square into seven seven double zero that is a twenty four into point thirty four kg per meter. Just putting all these values, W S square B square upon three E I L W is equal to M G. So delta one is equal to that is static flexion due to the mass 
और फिफ्टी के जी एड सी डेल्टा वन एम ओन जी इंटू ए स्क्वेयर अपन इंटू बी स्क्वेयर डिवाइड बाई टी ई आई पुटिंग ऑल दिस वैल्यू वी गॉट सेवेंटी इंटू टेन टू माइन सिक्स मीटर वेयर ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव बी इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट वन टू फाइव मीटर सिमिलरली स्टार्टिक लोड रिफ्लेक्शन ड्यू टू द मास फिफ्टी के जी एट रेस्टन डी डी डेल्टा टू इज इक्वल टू एम ओन जी इंटू ए स्क्वेयर इंटू बी स्क्वेयर डिवाइड बाई ई आई एल द स्टार्टिक रिफ्लेक्शन ड्यू टू इनफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लोड ओवर द मास ऑफ शाफ्ट डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू फाइव अपॉन थ्री एटी फोर इंटू डब्ल्यू एल रेस टू फोर अपॉन ई आई Putting all this value, we got fifty-six ten to two minus six meter. Substituting W is equal to M S into G. Now we have to find out the natural frequency of transverse vibrations. F N is equal to zero point four nine eight five upon under root of delta one plus delta two plus delta S upon one point twenty seven. We got the answer that is thirty two point four hertz. The whirling speed of shaft is N S is equal to Point RPS per equal to the frequency of transverse vibration in hertz. So N is equal to thirty two point four RPS. That is we have to convert into the RPM. That is thirty two point four into sixty. That is nine one nine four four RPM. So this is all about the whirling speed and its problem. It's quite easier.